Hey guys, Jason here. This is the Head First Alta 100, right? This is the prototype amp that I have been working on um, over the last few months. I did a um, first tones clip and I released that a few weeks ago. And since then, I've just been working on kind of, you know, fine tuning this thing to, um, to where my ears um, attuned to, right, in terms of the sound I want to get out of this thing. It's Marshall inspired, right? So I've had a number of questions since I posted a few clips on this thing, you know, well, what is it? What is it? It's my own design, right? Make no mistake about that. But it's got Marshall DNA, um, because, you know, let's face it, right? That is the sound that I gravitate to and the sound that I grew up with, right? I want to talk today about the features of the amp, right? And I think I'll do a few separate clips to, you know, really kind of um, showcase the tones that you can get out of this thing. So today's video will be, we'll do some sounds, right? But I really want to focus on the kind of functionality side, give you a sense of what the amp's capable of from a kind of settings and, and so on perspective. And as I said, we'll do um, some more detailed tones in a separate clip. For today, I am running um, the amp into this Marshall 4x12, um, which is an old 80s cab. It's got first reissue greenbacks in it. And I'm micing it up with an SM57, which is going into an Apollo twin interface. So let's talk about the amp. It's a three channel amp, right? It has a clean channel on channel one. Channel one has its own EQ stack, right? Tone stack, bass, middle, and treble has its own gain and volume control. Channel two and three have shared EQ and um, channel three is effectively a gain stage added to channel two, right? So they have, they have a lot in common and you've got to think of like, think of channel three as like um, putting a boost in front of an amp, right? So if you might sit and, you, you know, dial in your Marshall amp, right? And you might have a boost out in front, clean boost or a mid boost or a tube screamer. Channel three is like that. It's pushing the front end of channel two, right? And it pushes it pretty hard. Um, channel two and channel three have their own gains, right? And their own volumes and then a shared EQ. We have a base, sorry, we have a depth and presence on the front of the amp, which are global. And on the rear of the amp is a uh, response pot, which is variable negative feedback and also two system volumes, right? So it's got two overall master volume controls, master one and master two. And I'll talk about why I added a master two to this amp as we go through some of the features which are switchable and available in this control panel here. And just in terms of settings for today, I have got the amp pretty much dialed in at noon on the EQ, right? I've got the gains on channel two and channel three up at about, you know, 2.30 and 3 p.m. Or, you know, if you want to use 0 to 10, it's 7 and 8. on. Uh, so 3 is at 7 and, and gain 2 is at 8. Um, I've got the gain on channel 1 at about 2.30, nearly 3 p.m., right? So my ambition with voicing the scent was to get it sounding, you know, um, in the sweet spot with pretty much the EQ, the presence, the depth, and the response, negative feedback, all kind of around midday, all right? You should be able to dial the amp in, put everything in midday, adjust the gain to your taste, right? But put all the EQ at midday and you should have a decent tone, right? And that's been really the, you know, the work over the last month or so has been voicing this amp so that in that position, all of the capability with respect to channels and voicing options all sound how I want them. So let's talk about the functionality on this thing, right? Um, you'll see on the video, this control panel at the front is all soft touch, okay? It's all soft touch LEDs. And I got the idea from mixing consoles, right? So I was searching through like catalogs and trying to figure out how I was going to, you know, implement the switching that I wanted in the sim. And I came across pictures of a mixing console that you'd see in a studio 
and the channel strip and the uh, the buttons on the channel strip, which are kind of tactile LEDs, right? You, you know, you click them and they light up. And I thought, that's it, right? That's what I want to go for. And so that's what we've implemented here. Channel one, channel two, and channel three are the first three selectable LEDs on the amp, okay? On channel one, we have the option of a bright cap, right? So the bright function on the amp for channel one is selectable with the LED function on the front, right? There are no toggle switches on the amp, no like, you know, click, click clickable mini toggle switches at all on the front or the rear. Every function on this thing is just available here. And the reason I did that right, is because any state that you wish to dial in can be stored into a MIDI preset and recalled. Right? So your options around uh, your brightness and the other options which I'll talk about can all be selected using the soft touch buttons and instantly recalled via a MIDI change message or a control change message if you just want to toggle options individually. Um, going to channel two, and when I talk about channel two, the options for channel two and channel three are, are common, right? So it also has a selectable bright cap, all right, bright switch. That uh, bright two function is common for channel two and channel three, okay? It has a vintage and a modern voicing. Okay, so vintage and modern voicing is available and selectable for channel two and channel three. All right, remembering channel three is kind of like that gain stage in front of channel two. Um, the vintage voicing is reminiscent of, you know, kind of, let's call it, you know, mid to late 70s, early 80s Marshalls. It's my own voicing, but it's, you know, it's kind of inspired by that, right? And the modern voicing is like modern martial uh, territory, okay? Um, we have clipping diodes, right? So there's a clipping uh, option in here, and the clip uh, option is available for channel two and channel three, right? So channel three with clipping on, it's pretty compressed. Um, up here, we have a selectable master two option and this is engages the second master volume pot on the rear of the amp and i mentioned this on my video blogs in the development of this amp before but the reason i put a second master on there was to be able to equalize the volume to your ears to taste when engaging clipping diodes right so anyone who's played with clipping diodes in an amp will know that when you engage a clipping function, the volume drops, right? Because it's compressing and clamping the voltage of your guitar signal in the amp, right? To provide that compression. So um, in my presets, which I'll run through shortly, you'll see that when I engage a clipping option on the amp, I'm engaging the second master. So I've got the second master dialed up to provide equal volume. Equally, if you're not using the clipping um, option, or maybe you're using the, clip, the clipping option exclusively, you could set the second master up as a volume boost for solos, um, which you could use on channel one, channel two, channel three, because it's global. Okay. Um, we have a loop, selectable loop, right? So the effects loop in the amp, which is um, standard kind of high voltage, um, zero loss effects loop, which is built into the amp, is able to be enabled or disabled simply with this button here. Again, um, that can be stored in a preset, right? So if you've got like a, you know, a, a delay pedal in your loop, which is having in your back line on your amp, uh, you could be, you know, you could be, you could have patches or presets which are calling that, um, or enabling the effects loop and bringing that delay um, in and out. And finally, there's a store button, right, which allows you to store your current configuration into the MIDI program preset. One of the things that I added to the firmware that I wrote for this MIDI switching is that the amp remembers your settings. So let me just move to program one, which I just did. I've got my um, Morningstar MC8 on the floor here, which is connected from the MIDI out of that to the MIDI of the amp. 
And um, one of the things I find with MIDI amps, right, having, you know, played with many of them, and I've, I've got a MIDI board that I use in DIY builds and we sell that um, to DIY builders, is when you turn the amp off, it always resets back to the default state when you turn it back on again. It's a pain, right? Because if you have a favorite setting and you're just using the amp, you know, at home particularly, right? You sort of turn it on and use it. You want it to remember your settings, right? Well, you can do that. So let me, you know, for example, if my favorite setting was channel two in uh, modern mode with no bright cat and it sounds like this. <laughs> I can store that, okay, let me turn the amp off, all right, it's now completely off, and when I turn it back on again, see, my stored setting is restored by default, right, this is really handy when you're just kind of, you know, using the amp off and on, off and on, all right, so I'm just going to move back, I'm going to reset that back to channel one, uh, with nothing on, store it back to my settings here. Now, the MIDI switching in the amp is really fast, right? And I've implemented a mute circuit in here. So when you switch these options, there are, is no crackle, pop. There's nothing that comes through, right? It's dead silent. And it's also really fast. So let me just move through a few different settings here and you'll get a sense of it. So I'm going to move to channel two. And uh, channel two in with the bright cap on. <laughs> That should demonstrate, right, that the switching is lightning fast, but absolutely no pops or clicks that uh, will come through the speaker cabinet. Okay, let me quickly go through um, some of the kind of basic tones, right? I, as I said, I want to do a separate video and I'll probably set the amp up um, in my rack setup. Uh, with the load box and an IR and maybe some effects and so on, and we'll go through some, you know, some more studio kind of focused tones. But for for this clip, let's re let me just go through the basic tones that are available from the functionality that I have just um, gone through. Right, so channel one, here we go. This is the kind of clean channel, right? It's got its own gain, as I mentioned. So you can crank this gain and get some kind of plexi style. Um, tones out of it. So this is it with, without the bright pin and I'm on, uh, this is my Pete Thorne uh, signature guitar. You've seen on the channel many, many times and up in the position five here, I am on um, the neck single core because the humbucker is split. <laughs> move to channel two and this is where we get into the different modes right so we've got the vintage voicing and the modern voicing so this is vintage voicing with no bright cap <laughs> Let's 
move to channel two with the modern voicing, right? No bright cat. <laughs> Right cap in. Let's move to the first of the clipping modes, right? So in channel two, we've got two options for clipping. We've got clipping with no bright and clipping with bright. Here's clipping with no uh, with no bright. <laughs> With the bright on. Let's move to channel three. Right, channel three, here we go. Vintage mode, vintage voicing, no bright. So this is, um, you got to think of this like, it's just like channel two, right? But it's got that kind of boost in front, hitting the front end of uh, channel two. It does have its own gain and volume, of course. And I've got the gain on channel two, three here, just back a little bit from how I had it set in channel two. <laughs> with the bright in. Channel three in modern voicing with no bright. Right on. And we can even go into clipping mode on channel three. This is like it's pretty compressed, right? But if you're into that, it's available on the end. Okay, guys, well, as you can see, there are a lot of voicing options in this beast, right? The idea here is to set up 
you know, three, four, five, whatever, right? But, a, you know, a more kind of limited number of your favourite voices, right? I've tried to cover the spectrum from kind of clean to edge of breakup through that kind of, you know, 70s Marshall kind of thing and right into hot rodded territory all the way to, you know, clipping dyes, the whole nine yards, right? It's all in here. Um, you can go through and set up as many presets as you like and recall them with, you know, your MIDI foot switch of choice. Or, you know, you can just set up a few options in here, right? And recall them and, and, you know, and rock it that way, right? Don't be spooked by the number of options in here because you can basically set it up and use it as a two or three channel amp. Even a single channel amp, right? Set and forget. Remember your favorite settings. You turn the amp off, turn it on, it remembers them. Or you can go all the way, right? And use this almost like you might do with some of the, um, the modeling style, um, setups that are out there in the market today where you've got you know, a really broad range of different tones, or you can get all that from this one amp. Well, that's the idea anyway. Um, I'll post more videos on this, right? We'll set this up in the studio rack um, with my setup here, and we'll do, do um, a lot more tones, right? Um, in terms of release plans, we want to get this thing out on the market before mid-year, right? So this side of 30 June, and as I've mentioned on the channel before, we will be manufacturing this Alta 100 amp here in Australia for the local market, but also in the US, right, for the North American market. It'll be manufactured in the US and available and supported out of the US, which I'm really excited about. And um, I will uh, we'll release more details about who I'm working with and how that's going to work um, in the coming weeks and months, right? Thanks for listening, guys. Um, I hope you're excited about the Sam. Maybe not as much as I am, but um, I'm really pumped about it and I'm really looking forward to be able to kind of finalise the design of this, move into the production stage and start to get this out. There is a waiting list, which is up and running, right? I've got a number of guys that have put their names on this, on the waiting list, which is fantastic. It costs nothing to get on the waiting list, right? So if you want to email me, Go ahead. I'll put your name on there, right? You'll have first option when we move into the pre-order stage, um, which will be coming uh, pretty soon, right? So it costs nothing to get on the waiting list. If you're interested, send me an email. I'll get you on there, right? And um, I'll see you next time.